Welcome to Literary Insights. This is the summary of the book, The Effective Executive, Peter F. Drucker. If you like this content, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Executives are responsible for the performance and goals of their organizations. They can be fired, but are accountable as long as they hold the job. Executives include both managers and individual contributors. They are defined by decision-making authority and responsibility, not necessarily by whether they manage others. Knowledge workers are executives if their decisions significantly impact organizational performance. They make up more knowledge organizations than org charts show. Executives at all levels do the same work, planning, organizing, motivating, and measuring. Their scope differs, but they all must be effective. Realities that demand but impede effectiveness. Time belongs to others, with constant interruptions. Executives will keep operating rather than focusing on high-level direction unless they change. More tasks and responsibilities than time or ability to do them. Must set priorities and delegate. Must balance conflicting needs and limited resources. Face constraint of abundance. Effectiveness must be cultivated as a habit and practice to overcome these realities or executives descend into futility. Effectiveness is not a virtue or miracle but a discipline. Executives often operate rather than determining priorities and contributions. They rely on events rather than their criteria to assess importance and relevance. This fritters away effectiveness. Executives can only be influential if others utilize what they contribute. They must gain the trust and confidence of subordinates and superiors. Their authority depends on effectiveness and trust. Responsibility cannot be shared or delegated. Though executives depend on others, the responsibility is theirs alone. The organization's needs come before the executive's own needs. Executives earn the privilege of their position by meeting responsibilities. Listen first, speak last. Influential executives listen to gain understanding before making pronouncements. Say we rather than I. Share credit and emphasize collective rather than individual responsibility. The message is that effectiveness is critical for executives but must be learned through hard work and discipline. Effectiveness depends on cultivating essential habits and practices. The key ideas are Executives face constant pressure on their time and need help to spend enough time on important priorities. They must dedicate significant time to complex work, decisions, and team development. Executives should record how they spend their time to gain awareness and adjust. They need to eliminate or minimize unimportant activities and delegate when possible. Effective time management is a habit that can be learned. People-related decisions require extensive time to make well. Executives must invest hours discussing options and evaluating solutions to make the proper judgment. Rushed choices often lead to poor outcomes. Travel and meetings are frequent time wasters for executives that can often be delegated. Executives should ask their teams what specific things they do that waste time without adding value. Lack of systems and foresight contribute to recurrent crises that waste time and should be prevented. Excess staffing also creates inefficiencies and time loss. Significant innovation and productivity require long, uninterrupted time to grapple with complex challenges. British executives lagged after WW2 because they tried to work as little as their subordinates. Eastern European peasants said what one does not have in one's feet, one's got to have in one's head. As physical labor has decreased, the mental demands on executives have intensified. They need effectiveness to maximize their contributions. In summary, executives must consciously manage their time and focus it on priorities to be effective. They need to minimize distractions and time wasters, invest in essential decisions, develop their teams, and dedicate significant time to complex, meaningful work. Effectiveness is a habit that can be learned and applied through diligent practice. Executives build effective human relations by enabling people to contribute based on their abilities. This focus on contribution is critical to their success and leadership. Three aspects are critical. Communications. Executives communicate in a way that helps others contribute. 
They explain the organization's needs, priorities, and constraints. They outline how others can contribute based on their knowledge and skills. Relationships. Executives build good relationships through a mutual focus on contribution. While differences may arise, shared dedication to goals overcomes them. Respect comes from collaboration and achievement, not superficial warmth. Development. Executives develop people by increasing their ability to contribute. They give people opportunities to gain experience and take on more responsibility. Executives follow up on development plans to ensure people gain opportunities to contribute at increasing levels. An example is a new company president who prioritized developing young managers. Though he led the company briefly, his emphasis on development greatly benefited the company for years. He regularly reviewed personnel files, called managers, praised effective action, and prodded them to fulfill promises. Specialists and knowledge workers must determine how to make their work useful to others. They must understand other roles and translate their work to address others' needs. Asking how they can contribute and in what form is critical. In summary, executives achieve results through people by helping them contribute based on their abilities. A focus on contribution, communicating needs, building productive relationships, and developing knowledge is the essence of effective leadership and human relations. While leaders come and go, developing people to achieve more contributes to lasting success. Here is a summary of the key points. Focus on strengths. Effective executives focus on employees' strengths and contributions rather than weaknesses. Strengths are the foundation for effective performance and results. Staffing and promotion decisions should be based primarily on strengths and the ability to achieve objectives. Focusing on weaknesses accepts mediocrity and limits people's potential. Design jobs around strengths. Organizations exist to utilize people's strengths. Jobs and roles should be designed to leverage strengths and minimize the impact of weaknesses. Impossible jobs that consistently defeat individuals need to be redesigned or split up. Give opportunities to prove strengths. Effective executives allow employees to develop and demonstrate their strengths through substantial, challenging jobs. They evaluate people based on stability and performance, not just job requirements or experience. Promotion is based on performance and resilience. Remove poor performers, it keeping people in jobs where they consistently underperform. T is unfair and should be removed. Keeping inadequate employees is unjust to others and cruel to the individuals themselves. Develop strengths. Effective development focuses on building muscles, not just fixing weaknesses. Marshall developed strong leaders by identifying and cultivating subordinate strengths through strategic opportunities and mentorship. Make objective personnel decisions. Effective executives make decisions based on performance and strengths, not personal qualities or relationships. They promote and staff based on strengths and results, not arguments like someone being indispensable. Favoritism and personal biases have no place in staffing. Except weaknesses, strong, influential people often have flaws and faults. One can only get strength with drawbacks. The key is whether the strengths outweigh and make up for the shortcomings of accomplishing objectives. With the correct principles and systems, ordinary people can achieve extraordinary results. In summary, the effective executive builds a high-performance organization by focusing on strengths, designing the right roles and opportunities, developing and promoting the right people, and making objective personnel decisions. Focusing on performance, muscles, and results can turn individual talents into organizational excellence. Theodore Vail made several critical decisions that ensured the survival and success of the Bell Telephone System. He recognized the Bell System's substantial capital needs and designed AT&T Common Stock to attract small, long-term investors. This provided stable capital for decades. Rather than rely on Wall Street, Vail set up the Bell System to be self-sufficient in raising capital. This gave the company more control and stability. Vail's strategic decisions tackled problems at a high conceptual level. They focused on the long-term, not short-term gains. They were innovative, going against conventional wisdom. For example, 
Vail believed service, not just profits, was the purpose of a business. He emphasized universal service through mass marketing to small customers. Vail audaciously proposed that the Bell system become a regulated monopoly, giving up laissez-faire competition in exchange for government oversight and protection from takeover. This stabilizing decision led to decades of success. Vail recognized that science, technology, and engineering excellence were the foundations of the Bell system, not financial manipulation or cutting costs. He invested heavily in technical education, research, and development. Vail saw the importance of aligning Bell system organization and culture with its strategy and mission. He worked to instill a spirit of public service, innovation, and excellence throughout the company. Vail upheld principles of integrity, trust, and fairness in the Bell Systems dealing with the public, regulators, and investors. The company's reputation for integrity was crucial to its success. In summary, Vail ensured the Bell Systems' survival through innovative, long-term strategic decisions based on sound principles. His vision encompassed service, technological leadership, integrity, and building the proper system dynamics to achieve sustained mission success. Vail's critical insight was that public service and trust are foundations for private enterprise. Here is a summary of the key points. Regulations were necessary for business survival, unlike the view that regulation was creeping socialism. Vail spent heavily on technology and research even when profits were down. His decisions were unpopular with some. Vail and Sloan's effective decisions saw problems as generic, requiring principles. Defined requirements for solutions. Determined optimal solutions before compromising. Included adaptation mechanisms. Went against beliefs but were vindicated. Vail ensured Bell System survival through. Raising capital attracting small investors. Establishing an in-house banking system. Tackling problems conceptually. Aiming for long-term optimal solutions. Incorporating flexibility. Defying convention. Making the Bell system largely self-sufficient. Effective decisions. Diagnose the situation appropriately. Develop effective rules and principles. Adapt to circumstances. Test with feedback to check validity. Most situations require rules or principles. Treat unique events individually. Mistakes. Treat generic as unique, apply old rules to new situations, misdiagnose the problem, incomplete problem definition. The decision process. Determine the situation's nature. Develop rules slash principles for generic situations. Treat unique events individually. Failure leads to better decisions and the proper rules. Success needs accepting complexity and engineering apt solutions. Effective decisions. Identify the underlying generic problem. Define clear objectives, boundary conditions. Test solutions and reassess, make corrections. Abandon decisions not meeting objectives. The Schlieffen plans failed by losing sight of boundary conditions and objectives. FDR adapted to changing conditions, abandoning his balanced budget plan for the New Deal. Flexibility and adaptability contributed to success. Summary, effective decision-making requires a problem-solving mindset, clarity of purpose, and adaptability. Decisions must seek conceptual solutions to root issues, not temporary fixes. Continually reassess based on outcomes. Recognize when conditions change and a new solution is needed. AFT shifted from economic recovery to political reform. H. After the bank holiday abandoned conservatism for radical innovation, realizing his original plan would only work if there were new political conditions. Successful decisions must satisfy multiple conditions. Leaders must think through these. The Bay of Pigs invasion failed because its requirements were incompatible, requiring a miracle. Leaders must determine what's right, not just acceptable. Know the right solution to find the right compromise. Sloan said to propose what's right without worrying about reactions or means. The proper settlement satisfies critical conditions, the wrong one does not. Decisions must convert to action to be effective. 
Leaders must determine who needs to know the decision, the required steps, who will act, and how. Policy statements with action commitments are helpful. Two examples show matching actions to actors' capacities. A company failed to tell the purchaser of the part it was discontinuing a product, causing excess inventory. Another had success setting up a business local could manage. Summary, leaders must think through conditions and specifications, determine the right solution, convert to action by matching actions to actors, and find the right compromise. Focus on what's right, not just acceptable. Ensure all affected know the decision. Success depends on these. The critical elements of decision-making are Define the problem. Ask the right questions to frame correctly. Analyze the causes. Identify root causes, not symptoms. Consider influencing factors and constraints. Develop options. Generate multiple options to solve the problem. Seek input from different perspectives. Evaluate options. Assess against essential requirements and constraints. Determine the pros, cons, risks, and benefits. Evaluate alignment with priorities and objectives. Make the decision. Choose to maximize benefits and minimize drawbacks and risks. Ensure means and resources to execute. Assign responsibility. Assign accountabilities and authorities to carry out necessary actions. Provide clear objectives and measures. Build and feedback. Create mechanisms to monitor results and impacts. Make adjustments as needed. Review assumption validity regularly. Effective decisions require judgment and choosing between imperfect alternatives. They are rarely between absolute right and wrong. Decision makers start with opinions and intuitions, then seek facts to support or refute them. The most crucial element is determining what information is genuinely relevant. An effective decision incorporates how it will be carried out and builds ongoing feedback loops to evaluate the outcomes. Summary, the key characteristics of effective decisions are They are based on opinions and judgment, not just facts. They consider multiple options to find the best alternative. They are evaluated against key priorities and objectives. They incorporate how the decision will be executed. They have feedback processes to monitor outcomes and adjust as needed. There are no facts without a criterion of relevance. What constitutes a fact depends on what one considers relevant and necessary to measure. This varies in different domains, like physics, cooking, and painting. People start with opinions, not facts. Asking people to find facts before forming an opinion is unrealistic and counterproductive. They will look for facts confirming what they already believe. The key is testing beliefs against facts. The effective executive encourages opinions but insists people consider how to test them. Specify what facts and evidence need gathering to assess opinion validity properly. Finding the proper measurement or criterion of relevance is critical. This often requires questioning traditional measures and looking at the situation anew. The most important question is what information is genuinely relevant and why. Here is a summary of the key points. The appropriate measurement is the most crucial element in effective decision making. It highlights what matters in a choice and helps determine the right action. One should consider alternative measurements and seek feedback. Relying on averages alone is not enough. Examining the specifics of a situation leads to better sizes and choices. Disagreement and conflicting opinions, not consensus, produce the best decisions. Quick agreement means the decision was not adequately considered. Discussing different views provides insight. Facts should be used to test opinions and determine which are most valid. Do not start with a conclusion and only look for confirming evidence. Consider all relevant facts. Develop alternative opinions and measurements. Test them against facts. Specify ways to evaluate them. Use disagreement and discussion to gain understanding. Choose sizes and points carefully. Do not start with a predetermined conclusion. Facts matter in how they relate to the criteria used in a decision, not in themselves. 
The key is finding the proper standards and measurements to highlight what matters. Consider the specifics, not just averages. Look at the particulars of a situation to find the appropriate measurement. There are often many ways to evaluate an issue, so considering alternatives helps determine the correct size. Promote disagreement and alternative perspectives. Do not assume you have the only correct view. Try to understand why reasonable people may differ to make the best choice. Avoid unnecessary decisions and fully commit when action is needed. Have the courage to make difficult but right choices. Apply wisdom, not just data or technical skills. Focus on meaningful decisions that matter. Computers are tools with narrow limits. They cannot match human judgment and adaptability. They force systematic decisions and distribute choice-making but cannot replace human wisdom in the most impactful determinations. Operating managers must transition to executives as computers take over rote tasks. This requires learning effective decision-making through experience. Recording time use and focusing on high-level contributions are the first steps. Developing strengths and determining priorities follow. Judgment and ethics are also required. Becoming effective develops individuals and organizations. It raises performance, vision, and purpose. Effectiveness is simple but transforms ordinary people into leaders that achieve uncommon results. It develops commitment and character. Executives' energy builds organizational effectiveness. Executives and managers must continually improve their effectiveness to achieve their full potential and avoid mediocrity. Executives shape the motivation, direction, and dedication of employees. Improving executive effectiveness is critical to improving organizational effectiveness and productivity. Executives must balance the needs of individuals and the organization. They must provide autonomy and allow people to utilize their expertise while ensuring work aligns with organizational priorities. Executives become effective by building on their strengths, aligning their values and the organization's values, and focusing on contributing to the organization's goals. Influential executives achieve high performance and personal fulfillment. Effectiveness is learned through practice. It requires focusing beyond yourself to work for the organization's and society's good. But it also means utilizing your unique strengths and values. Following generic formulas or imitating other companies is ineffective. Each organization and executive must pursue effectiveness in their way. The key message is that executive effectiveness is essential for progress. It requires focusing on opportunities, priorities, and strengths in balancing individual and organizational needs. Actual energy comes from understanding and utilizing your unique strengths, values, and purpose to benefit others. It cannot be achieved through imitation alone. Each organization and executive must pursue it in a distinctive way. The summary outlines some of the fundamental principles around developing executive effectiveness according to the excerpt. The core ideas are that point must be systematically learned, it requires balancing individual and organizational priorities, and it comes from understanding and utilizing your unique strengths and purpose. Executives shape organizational effectiveness, so improving their effectiveness is critical. But there is no formula, each executive and organization must pursue energy.